Good morning and welcome to NASA TV and uh, our coverage of SpaceX Dragon 3 Grapple. The SpaceX Dragon has been on its way to the space station since 2.25 p.m. Central Time on Friday and after about a day and a half in space has been uh, has come to within 250 meters of the space station now. The crew standing by to uh, and, and making preparations to capture it and bring it in for Berthink have uh, reported that they have the dragon in sight. It's about, again, 250 meters away, and they for saw it for the first time at 3.44 a.m. Central Time. They're actually scheduled to uh, grapple the dragon at 6.14 a.m. Again, the Dragon launched on board Falcon 9 at 2.25 p.m. Central Time from Florida on Friday. Station Houston on and is planning to stay until May 18th. Uh, to keep, up, keep out fear of 200 meters, crew it now has the authority to issue abort in case of corridor violation during LOS. That was Capcom. Houston on two, we copy, thanks. Capcom Jack Fisher reporting that the uh, Dragon's now within 200 meters of the space station, steadily making its way towards that grapple time, scheduled for 6.14 a.m. The team today is led here in the room by Flight Director Matt Abbott. Again, the Dragon has been in space for about a day and a half now, making its way towards the space station. It launched at 2.25 p.m. Central Time, and here's some video of that launch. And lift off of the Falcon 9 rocket. From Cape Canaveral, Florida. SpaceX 3 is underway. On uh, Friday. And it is carrying with it uh, 3,500 pounds of science, hardware, crew supplies, and spacewalk tools. First stage propulsion is nominal. Within that 3,500 pounds, there are included 150 different science experiments that uh, focus on topics such as growing plants in space, demonstrating laser optics for use in communicating to Earth, human immune system function experiments and Earth observation, as well as legs for Robonaut 2, already on board the space station and experiments that look at protein crystal growth and plant biology. All that on board the space station and now supersonic speed. Just an hour and a half away from actually uh, arriving at the space station. Again, the capture is scheduled for 6.14 a.m. Central Time. That uh, capture will be accomplished by the space station's robotic arms and at the helm of the robotic arm will be commander of the station, Koichi Wakata, and flight engineer Rick Mastracchio. Steve Swanson, uh, another flight engineer, is also going to be on hand to help, but as he wasn't originally scheduled to be at the station for the Dragon's launch, he doesn't have an active role in the capture. Also monitoring from here on the ground is the SpaceX Mission Control Center, which is located in Hawthorne, Hawthorne, California. Flight controllers there are watching over the Dragon systems closely, and uh, everything looking pretty good with the with the Dragon systems, uh, just about as expected. They've had a few com, uh, communication dropouts, but uh, don't expect those to uh, have any effect on today's activities, as they are very short and... Uh, the system's computers are responding to them just as they should and switching over to its uh, second loop.
And here is a look at the Dragon capsule making its way towards the International Space Station, 150 meters away now. Station and uh, Dragon are 260 miles above Mongolia at the moment and heading uh, northeast towards the border of Russia. And again, uh, Dragon just 150 meters away from the space station now. It's scheduled to be within 100 meters at 5.13 a.m. Central. From there, the teams here on the ground will take a go no go poll to determine if it has a, if it is a safe to move within 100 feet. And uh, assuming that is as expected, the crew there inside the cupola of the space station monitoring the, the Dragon's approach. Assuming everything does continue to go as planned, the uh, Dragon will get the go ahead to depart from that uh, 100 foot uh, or 30 meter circle at 5.39 a.m. Central Time. Houston on two for drag, another corridor. Update uh, the white strobe well within the crew aboard corridors on both uh, cameras. The vehicle size relative to the vehicle outline is the vehicle outline is just a slightly bigger, slightly larger than the vehicle in camera three and uh, probably also in camera nine also. The uh, white strobe position with respect to the strobe tracker, let's, the white strobe three is forward of the strobe tracker, yeah, maybe a third or a quarter of a vehicle length, maybe just a small amount. On camera nine though, the strobe tracker, I should say the white strobe is forward of the strobe tracker, about a third of a length of the vehicle and uh, the stroke tracker is starboard, maybe about a half a diameter. That sounds like good alignment. Thanks a lot, Rick. Flight. Sorry, in the primary range and secondary range, both about one, 126 and a half right now, so they're pretty close to each other. Copy that. Rick Mastracchio, flight engineer, uh, reporting on the view they're seeing of Dragon, which is what you're seeing here, giving the, uh, the team uh, a report on how close the Dragon is getting to the space station and uh, the controls that they see, comparing it to the outline of the vehicle, which you can see in this. This is the view the crew has at the robotic workstation inside the cupola, which is where they'll be uh, controlling the station's 57-foot-long robotic arm using it to grab hold of the Dragon and bring it in for a berthing at the space station. In addition to Mastracchio here in the green shirt, you of course also see Commander Koichi Wakata in the blue shirt and Flight Engineer Steve Swanson in the red. In addition to this work uh, today on the arrival of the Dragon, the crew's also been getting ready for preparations for a spacewalk scheduled for Wednesday to be conducted by Mastracchio and Swanson. The arrival of the Dragon lets them uh, 
plan for for that Wednesday spacewalk, which will repay, re replace a failed backup multiplexer demultiplexer computer relay system. That system would provide commands to the station's external cooling loops, solar alpha rotary joints, and uh, the mobile transporter rail on the station's truss if the uh, primary system failed. So they want to get that fixed as soon as possible. And then Dragon is bringing with it some tools for spacewalks. Dragon's now within 100 meters of the space station. That's 328 feet, continuing to make its way towards uh, the 30 meter point at which they could crew or the team here on the ground will conduct its next go no go pole that will allow it to get uh, to continue moving in even closer. Houston on two for Dragon, uh, primary secondary range, just uh, showing, let's see, primary range 95 and a half, secondary range 94.7, and the, uh, the white strobe on camera three, everything is looking good, the vehicle size relative to the outline is good, the strobe is looking good, and on camera nine, I would say the, uh, the white strobe is about, you know, maybe a third of a vehicle width starboard of the strobe tracker, but it uh, looks like it's all converging nicely. Fantastic. Thanks, Rick. Ms. Decker, you're reporting again on Dragon's progress to uh, team here on the ground. Uh, Capcom Jack Fisher speaking for them, saying everything's continuing to look as expected as the Dragon continues to move closer now about 92 meters away from the station.
continuing to see a good view of Dragon here as uh, the space station and Dragon move into the dark portion of this orbit around the Earth. They're just coming up on the sunset for this orbit. Uh, Dragon now about 75 meters away from the space station, or about 250 feet, and continuing to move into that 30 meter point where there will be a hold while the team on the ground assess the situation and make sure everything looks safe to go ahead and move in closer for the uh, capture scheduled at 6.14 a.m. Inside of it, the Dragon's carrying 3,500 pounds of uh, experiments, hardware, supplies, and tools for the crew. In all, uh, 150 experiments are on board, including one called OPALS, which stands for Optical Payload for Laser Comp Science. That experiment's going to test the use of laser optics to send information to the ground which could improve the data rate factors by a factor of uh, 10 to 100. Hopefully this would give future missions the ability to send more data down to scientists on the Earth with the same amount of power. Another uh, experiment on board is a T-cell activation and aging experiment, which looks to identify the defect in T-cell activation in microgravity. T-cell activation is an immune response that's used to fight foreign antigens. T-cells are white blood cells coated with chemical receptors that must activate together to run the body's immune system properly. And although this obviously has uh, implications for health in space, it could also help us here on the ground understand and treat autoimmune d diseases such as arthritis and diabetes. Also inside the Dragon is the Veggie Production System, which is a plant growth unit that will allow the crew to grow salad ingredients, basically, and uh, provide safe, fresh, nutritious food in space, although they won't actually get to eat that just yet. It may lead to the ability to do so in the future. And the vehicle also has on board the long-awaited legs for Robonaut 2, the robot at the space station. Just been there uh, since it was delivered on STS-133. However, it's currently uh, only able to be tested on top of a stanchion as it stands in one place. The legs will give it the ability to move around the space station, which would be necessary for it to, to uh, be useful to the crew. The idea of the Robonaut is that it would be able to uh, take on some of the tasks that the crew currently is responsible for, but that are either too dangerous or too uh, dull for the crew's time. Robonaut's a test bed to uh, test out ideas for how a robot could be used in space on such activities.
Dragon now less than 50 meters away from the space station, about 160 feet, and continuing to move closer. Again, it's heading towards a 30 meter point where it will hold so the teams on the ground can assess everything and make sure all looks good for moving on with the uh, capture of the dragon. That will, uh, it will arrive at thir the 30 meter point around 5.12 a.m. Central Time. And then while the teams on the ground assess, it'll hang out there until about uh, 5.39 a.m. By that time, we'll just about be to sunrise, so the crew will have good lighting as it moves in for the capture. Scheduled to, scheduled to arrive within uh, the reach of the station's robotic arm by 5.56 a.m., but the actual uh, capture is scheduled for 6.14 after the team here on the ground has had time to do one more assessment and give the crew a go or no go for actually grabbing onto it. Again, capture is scheduled to take place at 6.14 p.m. Central Time. Just a couple meters left to go now until Dragon reaches the 30 meter hold point. Houston Space Ground 2, we're in uh, VV mode of hold, range about 29.4 primary, 29.3 secondary. 
everything looks good, the vehicle size relative to the uh, corridors, and the strobe is just on the edge of the strobe tracker. Copy that, Rick. Stand by just a second. Flight Engineer Rick Mistrecchio reporting and confirming for the ground that the Dragon is in the 30 meter, is at the 30 meter point. Again, that's where it holds. And uh, now that it's there, just giving another update on what they're seeing on the view that uh, you see here. This is what the crew is looking at inside the cupola at the robotic workstation, just verifying that the uh, displays are all as expected with the vehicle the right size within the display and the Dragon strobe light showing up within the green circle. Dragon is holding at 30 meters. You are cleared to perform 1.102 step 4. Okay. Uh, understand. 1.102 step 4 and work. Again, now that the Dragon is at this 30 meter point, uh, it'll hang out here for a while and wait for sunrise while the teams here on the ground do another assessment and make sure everything is as expected before they send it uh, or give it the go to move within 30 meters and get in range of the station's robotic arm for its capture. Scheduled to uh, move ahead if everything looks good at 5.39 a.m. Sunrise coming at 5.41. And it should be within range of capture at 5.56 a.m. Central Time. Station and Dragon are currently 260 miles above the North Pacific Ocean, just south of Hawaii, and heading south towards the tip of uh, Chile.
Houston Space to Ground 2, uh, the pre-brief is complete. The crew is ready for the Dragon approach to the capture point when you guys are. Copy that, Rick. Hey, we got about uh, 15 minutes for lighting. Uh, we're also still monitoring that UHF comlink swap. Uh, for right now, you, we expect that you may see uh, dropouts or, or uh, latency in the uh, CCP and uh, comlink lights and or the overlays, so we're going to get you a good solid story before we press in from 30 meters and uh, let you know exactly what we're expecting. Okay, we understand, and just uh, on the, the panel up here, we see the Link 1 and Link 2 LEDs have been constantly lit uh, every time we look at them, so they look pretty solid from our perspective. Sounds great. That's good info, and, and we'll make sure we have a good solid plan and we're, everybody's on the same sheet of music before we press in. Another about 15 minutes before we press. Everything. Crew on board the space station reporting that they are done with their prep work uh, that needs to be completed before the Dragon moves away from this 30-meter hold point to uh, get within range of the station's robotic arm for capture. Meanwhile, the team on the ground here is still looking into everything, making sure that the uh, Dragon's systems are good to go for that uh, move. One thing they are keeping an eye on that uh, Capcom Jack Fisher mentioned there is the... Uh, short calm dropouts that the Dragon has been experiencing as it's made its way to the space station. Those are uh, taking about 10 seconds uh, every time it happens. The vehicle responds as it is supposed to and switches over to a second line. That again takes about 10 seconds and teams here on the ground don't think it should be a problem for the day but uh, before they do give it that final go to move within range of capture. They're taking one more look at the issue just to verify. For the uh, comps dropouts to create a problem, they would uh, need to be more than 50 seconds long. And again, the vehicle currently is handling them as it should, switching over to a backup link and rebooting in about 10 seconds. If the dropouts did take more than 50 seconds, the uh, Dragon would automatically abort its approach to the space station. Again, that's not expected to create a problem, but uh, the crew team here on the ground just taking one more look at it as they get ready to do their go or no-go pole for the Dragon to move out of this 30-meter hold and begin its final approach to the station. Continuing to see a view of the SpaceX Dragon 3, now at the 30 meter hold point on its approach to the International Space Station, it's scheduled to uh, stay here for a few more minutes, uh, getting ready or waiting for the sunrise. That's scheduled to take place at 5:41, and uh, while 
waiting for that uh, sunrise and the correct lighting conditions. The team here on the ground is assessing the Dragon systems and uh, getting ready to take a go or no-go poll to give the, the go-ahead to move, uh, begin on its final approach and move within that 30-meter range for the station station's robotic arm to uh, reach out and capture it and bring it in for berthing. Inside the station's cupola the, at the robotic workstation, Commander Koichi Wakata and Flight Engineer Rick Mastracchio are going through their procedures, getting ready for that capture. Wakata will be at the uh, controls of the 57-foot long robotic arm, He'll be the one to actually capture the dragon, but uh, Mastracchio's keeping an eye on the operations uh, as well, and uh, they're also kept company by flight engineer Steve Swanson. Dragon scheduled to arrive at the capture point at 5.56 a.m. Central Time and should be captured by 6.14 a.m. It's now just about 45 minutes away, and again, scheduled for capture at 6.14 a.m. Central Time. Station Houston on two for Dragon. Go ahead, Houston. Hey, for uh, Monitor 1, the uh, S1 lower outboard, if you want to, you can uh, switch that around to the other side. You know, it'll get it'll get stuck there uh, trying to track it into capture if you don't have it on the other side of the uh, center point. Okay, uh, that's a good heads up. Thank you for the information. We'll do that. You betcha. Houston station on two uh, on the uh, camera zero three. You're talking about the pan angle, correct? To the other side. A firm.
station Houston on two for Dragon. Go ahead, Houston. Hey, just wanted to bring you up to speed with what we're seeing. Uh, we haven't seen one of those channel swaps in over 30 minutes. Uh, we believe that the current procedures is going to keep you safe. Uh, if you, as you did in the last step, uh, reviewing the Dragon Backway Q card 2.101, um, as long as you're not seeing the visiting vehicle to ISS LOS uh, caution, then we should be good to go. If you did see that, then obviously you just follow the uh, standard procedure. Okay, we understand. No, we haven't seen any of those at all. And we'll uh, we'll get back with you here shortly. We're going to initiate the approach uh, momentarily. We'll be ready. Thanks. Capcom Jack Fisher there talking with the crew, letting them know that uh, they will be beginning the approach within 30 meters. 30 meters of the station any minute now. Uh, that's scheduled to start at uh, 5.39, so right on time. The crew teams here on the ground have taken their go, no-go poles and uh, declared that the Dragon is go to move into this, move in towards the space station. And as uh, Fisher mentioned, the calm, the short calm dropouts that the teams here on the ground had noticed earlier in the night, uh, they haven't seen one of those for uh, more than 30 minutes, and they don't expect it to be a problem for the crew on board the station. So Dragon should be moving in towards the station now as the uh, sun gets ready to come up and uh, crew prepares for its final approach and capture. You are cleared to perform uh, 1.102, step 5. Okay, we see the vehicle. Do you hear inside? Working block, or step 5. View here inside of the cupola at the robotic workstation where the crew will be using that uh, the station's 57 foot long Canada Arm 2 to grab onto the Dragon. That will take place once it uh, gets a little closer. Right now it's about 30 meters out and needs, it's about uh, 100 feet and uh, needs to be within range of the station's robotic arm, which again is 57 feet long. Capture should actually occur when it is about 35 feet away from the space station. Houston, uh, we see the, mo the vehicle mode and approach, primary, secondary range, both about 28 and a half meters. And uh, the um, white strobe is well within the crew aboard corridors on both displays. The vehicle size is pretty much the same as the vehicle outline. The white strobe position relative to the white strobe or the strobe tracker in camera three, the white strobe is aft and port, I'm sorry, forward and port tracker. And on the camera nine, looks like the white strobe is inside or right on the edge of the strobe tracker. Copy that. Good words. And by the way, guys, we have the camera view of you, and you look strikingly handsome this morning. Okay, Koichi says thank you. And now, uh, just as a little more detail, camera three, the white strobe is uh, just a small amount forward and uh, port of the tracker. I, I can't quantify the number, probably the, uh, about the width or the diameter of the tracker itself or less. Copy that. Sounds good. Still seeing a view here inside the cupola of the crew, reporting that they are ready for the capture of the dragon once it gets within range, and it's moving that way now. Currently 27 meters away from the uh, space station, about 88 feet, and uh, moving steadily towards the station's robotic arm for its capture and later berthing to the station's harmony node.
Space Station and Dragon are about 260 miles above the South Atlantic Ocean now, having just passed over the southern tips of Chile and Argentina and moving in, as you can see, to the daytime portion of this orbit around the Earth. About uh, 11 minutes away now from the Dragon's arrival at the capture point and a little less than 30 minutes away from its actual capture by uh, Station Commander Koichi Wakata using the Space Station's Canada Arm 2. Wakata here with Flight Engineer F Rick Mastracchio inside the cupola's, uh, the station's cupola at the robotic workstation where they'll be controlling that robotic arm, using it to grab onto the Dragon. And here you're seeing a view of one of the displays they'll be using to monitor its progress. Dragon's bringing to the station 3,500 pounds of cargo, including about 150 sp science experiments. Some of the uh, experiments that uh, will be arriving at the space station will study things such as growth of plants in space, demonstrating laser optics for communication with, with the Earth, and uh, focus on the human immune system function in space, as well as Earth observation cameras for the exterior of the space station, legs for the station's robot, Robonaut 2, and some experiments on protein crystal growth and plant biology. All that carried within the SpaceX, which is planning to spend about a month at the space station before it departs on May 18th and carries home another load of uh, completed experiments and samples for scientists to study. Dragon now just 20 meters away from the space station, about 50, uh, 65 feet, continuing to move in. Scheduled to arrive at the capture point in uh, about eight and a half minutes now.
about five minutes left now until dragon the dragon reaches the uh, capture point where it'll be within range of the space station's robotic arm. Kuichi Wakata again at the controls for that robotic arm and prepared to capture it at 6.14 a.m. Central Time, about 21 minutes away from now. You see Wakata here inside the cupola of the station with uh, Steve Swanson, who's been observing the activities this morning. He wasn't originally scheduled to be here when the Dragon arrived, but the launch delays uh, have uh, made it possible for him to, to be on hand to watch the activities, although Wakata and Rick Mastracchio are the main crew members in charge of the capture of the Dragon today. Dragon's now fi less than 50 feet away from the space station, about 15 meters, and continuing to close in. Another three and a half minutes left to go until it reaches the capture point. Houston on two for another corridor monitoring update. Uh, we see the range about 13 and a half meters, primary and secondary range agree. We're in the approach mode. The uh, white strobe is well within the crew board corridors. The vehicle size is a little smaller than the vehicle outline. White strobe position, we'll say the uh, in camera three, the white strobe is inside the strobe tracker. Camera nine, the white strobe is just forward of the strobe tracker, and the strobe tracker is centered on the crew board corridor. Copy all good words. Rick Mastracchio, they're reporting on what the crew is seeing in their window and at their displays, which they are, have been monitoring uh, as the Dragon approached the space station. Again, preparing to use the station's robotic arm to reach out and capture it on the grapple hold, which you can now see in this view, directly in the center of the screen. The station's 50 foot long, or 57 foot long Canada Arm 2 will uh, grab onto the prong you see there in the center of the screen and use that to guide the Dragon in for a berthing to the Harmony node. This view you can see now the uh, robotic arm in position for the uh, capture once it arrives at the point. That's in the lower left hand corner of the screen. And in the background a view of the Earth from 260 miles above the South Atlantic Ocean heading northeast towards the coast of Africa.
track is now less than 10 meters away from this station and has now arrived at the capture point. Houston, we have a uh, exceeding limits velocity message. We see that too, Rick. It should uh, go away uh, once it settles, once the uh, velocity settles down. Give it just a moment. Yeah, it's gone, Houston. Thanks. And station Houston on two, Dragon is holding at the capture point. You're cleared to perform 1.102 step six. We see it in CP hold, Houston in work, step six. Now that the Dragon is at the capture point, the crew is uh, taking another look at their displays, making sure everything matches up to what they expect before they get ready for the actual capture, which is about 15 minutes away now. Houston station on two, uh, velocity exceeding limits uh, went away and then it came back and uh, now it went away. Oh, actually it's flickering. Now we see that uh, exceeding limits velocity. And as far as lighting, uh, we see shadow on the grapple fixture target and uh, that looks acceptable to us as far as lighting. Copy that, guys. Uh, stand by for a go to perform the capture. We're going to give Dragon a few more minutes for that velocity to calm down. Okay, copy. Uh, Houston stations to the ground. Say again? Uh, Houston stations to the ground. So, thank you very much. We have uh, our uh, prayer conference is completed. Thank you very much. Copy that. Still seeing a good view of the SpaceX Dragon 3 
now about 10 meters away from the International Space Station and ready for capture. Team here on the ground has done their go and no-go poll and confirmed that uh, they are go for that capture and uh, just waiting a few more minutes to make sure that the relative Houston, velocity between the vehicles is right. Capture sequence perform 1.110 step 4, again monitoring the back away cue card. Okay, copy, Houston, we're go for capture. We're procedure 1.110, step 4, and we have the backway cue card out. We're, we'll be keeping an eye on it. Capcom Jack Fisher there reporting to the crew that they do have that go for capture. Again, uh, Commander Kuichi Wakata will be at the controls of the station's robotic arm here in, at the robotic uh, workstation inside the station's cupola. View here from the station's robotic arm as it moves in for the capture of the dragon, controlled by station commander Koichi Wakata. Capture is scheduled to take place in uh, about seven minutes now at 6.14 a.m. Central Time. Everything looking good as it uh, gets ready to move in.
Commander Koichi Wakata slowly moving the robotic arm now into uh, into place for the capture of the dragon. It's about four meters away or 13 feet from the uh, grapple fixture that it'll grab on hold grab hold of uh, for the capture. Now just about three meters to go, or a little less than 10 feet. Houston, uh, we got the exceeding limits of velocity indicator we're, we're holding on the approach here. Yeah, it looks like that uh, came up right as you were trying to go into free drift. Let's give it a minute uh, for it to calm down and we'll resend it. Copy. It's kind of flashing in and out here. Station Houston, it looks like if I, when I ready to... I'm ready to command free drift. I'm going to have to command arm and then execute for the free drift. Do you agree? A firm. And we're... Uh, okay, here we go. You are cleared for that. Crew paused in the, uh, in the motion of the robotic arm to check out uh, an indication on their displays that said the velocity was a little over what was expected, but uh, Team Hill Ground here giving them the go-ahead now to get back into movement of the station's robotic arm. It's now about two meters away from SpaceX Dragon. Free drift, command set. And we're now showing free drift. Just one meter now left to go, about three feet, before the uh, space station's cannon arm two is able to grab hold of the SpaceX Dragon 3. And the Canada Arm 2 with Commander Koichi Wakata at the controls now has the SpaceX 3 in its grip. Took place right on time at 6.14 a.m. Central while the Station and Dragon were 260 miles 
above uh, the Nile River. View here inside the SpaceX Mission Control Center at Haw in Hawthorne, California, where the team is celebrating the arrival of the SpaceX 3 Dragon at the International Space Station, now firmly in the grip of the station's Canada Arm 2. Again, that took place right on time at 6.14 a.m. Central Time while the station and Dragon were about 260 miles above the Nile. Houston uh, Station on 2, uh, capture is complete. Do you have a goal for post-capture reconfiguration? And congratulations to the entire ops team for the uh, successful launch, rendezvous, and the capture operation. The vehicle, the spacecraft, was very solid and very stable. And the uh, Canada Arm 2 was really uh, solid, and then um, it made it uh, easier for us to, to capture. And the uh, procedures and ops products were wonderful. Thank you very much for the wonderful support for this operation. Again, congratulations. And congratulations to you, Koichi. Flight told me that you demand, and, and you proved it just then with our uh, free drift trickery. Um, great work catching the Dragon. It's been a long road and a lot of work for a lot of hard work by all the uh, team at Hawthorne, Houston, and around the world uh, to get the Dragon up there and enable the fantastic science that you're about to do next week. So good job to everybody, and thanks for getting her on board. Yeah, thanks, Stu Fish, for your kind words. We're excited. Commander Koichi Wakata there expressing congratulations to the SpaceX team, and that uh, echoed by Capcom Jack Fisher. Now that SpaceX has officially arrived at the space station and it is in the grip of the station's robotic arm, all that's left now is the berthing of the space station, which is uh, scheduled to begin at 8.45 a.m. Central Time. NASA TV coverage of that will pick up at 8.30 a.m. Central.
Once again, the uh, SpaceX Dragon 3 has arrived at the space station and been captured by the space station's Canada Arm 2 with Commander Kuichi Wakata at the controls. It brings to the station 3,500 pounds of uh, hardware, equipment, and supplies, including 150 science experiments. And now all that's left is to actually berth the Dragon to the station. We're going to take a pause in our coverage now and pick back up at 8.30 a.m. for those activities, which are scheduled to take place or get started at 8.45 a.m. Central Time. That, again, will be the berthing of the Dragon to the Harmony Node 2 scheduled for 8.45 a.m. Central, and we'll be back at 8.30 a.m. here on NASA TV for that. This is Mission Control Houston. The arrival of the Dragon, the crew's also been getting ready for preparations for spacewalk scheduled for Wednesday to be conducted by Ms. Dracchio and Swanson. The arrival of the Dragon lets them uh, plan for, for that sp Wednesday spacewalk, which will, will replace a failed backup multiplexer, demultiplexer computer relay system. That system would provide commands to the station's external cooling loops, solar alpha rotary joints, and uh, the mobile transporter rail on the station's truss if the uh, primary system failed, so they want to get that fixed as soon as possible and then Dragon is bringing with it some tools for spacewalks. Dragon's now within 100 meters of the space station. That's 328 feet continuing to make its way towards uh, the 30 meter point at which they uh, crew or the team here on the ground will conduct its next go no go pole that'll allow it to get uh, to continue moving in even closer Houston on two for Dragon, uh, primary, secondary range, just uh, showing, let's see, primary range 95 and a half, secondary range 94.7, and the, uh, the white strobe on camera three, everything is looking good, the vehicle size relative to the outline is good, the strobe is looking good, and on camera nine, I would say the, uh, the white strobe is about, you know, maybe a third of a vehicle width starboard of the strobe tracker, but it uh, looks like it's all converging nicely. Fantastic. Thanks, Rick. Ms. Decker, you're reporting again on Dragon's progress to uh, team here on the ground. Uh, Capcom Jack Fisher speaking for them. Good morning and welcome to NASA TV and uh, our coverage of SpaceX Dragon 3 Grapple. The SpaceX Dragon has been on its way to the space station since 2.25 p.m. Central Time on Friday and after about a day and a half in space has been, uh, has come to within 250 meters of the space station now. The crew standing by to, uh, and, and making preparations to capture it and bring it in for Berthing have uh, reported that they have the Dragon in sight. It's about, again, 250 meters away, and they for saw it for the first time at 3.44 a.m. Central Time. They're actually scheduled 
to uh, grapple the Dragon at 6.14 a.m. Again, the Dragon launched on board Falcon 9 at 2.25 p.m. Central Time from Florida on Friday. Station Houston on And is planning to stay until May 18th. Uh, to keep, up, keep out fear of 200 meters, crew now has the authority to issue abort in case of corridor violation during LOS. That was Capcom. Houston on two, we copy, thanks. Capcom Jack Fisher reporting that the uh, Dragon's now within 200 meters of the space station, steadily making its way towards that grapple time, scheduled for 6.14 a.m. Team today is led here in the room by Flight Director Matt Abbott. Again, the Dragon has been in space for about a day and a half now, making its way towards the space station. It launched at 2.25 p.m. Central Time, and here's some video of that launch. And lift off of the Falcon 9 rocket. From Cape Canaveral, Florida. SpaceX 3 is underway. On uh, Friday. And it is carrying with it uh, 3,500 pounds of science, hardware, crew supplies, and spacewalk tools. First stage propulsion is nominal. Within that 3,500 pounds, there are included 150 different science experiments that uh, focus on topics such as growing plants in space, demonstrating laser optics for use. In so the strobe tracker, or I should say the white strobe, is forward of the strobe tracker, about a third of a length of the vehicle. And uh, the strobe tracker is starboard, maybe about a half a diameter. That sounds like good alignment. Thanks a lot, Rick. Flight. Sorry, in the primary range and secondary range, both about one, 126 and a half right now, so they're pretty close to each other. Copy that. Rick Mastracchio, flight engineer, uh, reporting on the view they're seeing of Dragon, which is what you're seeing here, giving the, uh, the team uh, a report on how close the Dragon is getting to the space station and uh, the controls that they see, comparing it to the outline of the vehicle, which you can see in this. This is the view the crew has at the robotic workstation inside the cupola, which is where they'll be uh, controlling the station's 57-foot long robotic arm, using it to grab hold of the Dragon and bring it in for a berthing at the space station. In addition to Mastracchio here in the green shirt, you of course also see Commander Koichi Wakata in the blue shirt and Flight Engineer Steve Swanson in the red. In addition to this work uh, today on the
And here is a look at the Dragon capsule making its way towards the International Space Station, 150 meters away now. Station and uh, Dragon are 260 miles above Mongolia at the moment and heading uh, northeast towards the border of Russia. And again, uh, Dragon just 150 meters away from the space station now. It's scheduled to be within 100 meters at 5.13 a.m. Central. From there, the teams here on the ground will take a go no go poll to determine if it has a, if it is a safe to move within 100 feet. And uh, assuming that is as expected, the crew there inside the cupola of the space station monitoring the, the Dragon's approach. Assuming everything does continue to go as planned, the uh, Dragon will get the go ahead to depart from that uh, 100 foot uh, or 30 meter circle at 5.39 a.m. Central Time. Houston on two for drag, another corridor. Update uh, the white strobe well within the crew aboard corridors on both uh, cameras. The vehicle size relative to the vehicle outline is the vehicle outline is just a slightly bigger, slightly larger than the vehicle in camera three and uh, probably also in camera nine also. The uh, white strobe position with respect to the strobe tracker, let's, the white strobe three is forward of the strobe tracker, yeah, maybe a third or a quarter of a vehicle length, maybe just a small amount. On camera nine, the Communicating to Earth. Human immune system function experiments and Earth observation, as well as legs for Robonaut 2, already on board the space station, and experiments that look at protein crystal growth and plant biology. All that on board the space station and now supersonic speed. Just an hour and a half away from actually uh, arriving at the space station. Again, the capture is scheduled for 6.14 a.m. Central Time. That uh, capture will be accomplished by the space station's robotic arms, and at the helm of the robotic arm will be commander of the station, Koichi Wakata, and flight engineer Rick Mastracchio. Steve Swanson, uh, another flight engineer, is also going to be on hand to help, but as he wasn't originally scheduled to be at the station for the Dragon's launch, he doesn't have an active role in the capture. Also monitoring from here on the ground is the SpaceX Mission Control Center, which is located in Hawthorne, Hawthorne, California. Flight controllers there are watching over the Dragon systems closely, and uh, everything looking pretty good with the with the Dragon systems, uh, just about as expected. They've had a few com, uh, communication dropouts, but uh, don't expect those to uh, have any effect on today's activities, as they are very short and... Uh, the system's computers are responding to them just as they should and switching over to its uh, second loop. 